I've opted to use uh, this um, traced version as the foundation for my uh, final rendering. So this is this is an outline of, of things that I traced off of a projection. I projected this uh, set up onto this piece of paper and then I use a uh, HB pencil to trace around outlines of these objects and their shadows and now I can I'm very confident about their proportions and their angles and their placement and I, I can start my process of developing my planes my masses uh, my values and also my light and shadow so typically what I'm going to do is start someplace where there's some contrast and where I want to have a focal point. And I'm going to use a series of hatch marks. I'm drawing with just a 2B graphite pencil. I'm going to start to develop some of these planes on this form. So that's like massing. Um, except that I'm using a small point, which is a pencil. So I have to hatch. As I'm massing and hatching, I will need to continually work on my outlines um, and other uh, kinds of contours, trying to not just trying to darken things up or color things in because I don't I don't have um, enough information. I still have to continue to add um, more information. Get started in the middle and pick some key places that are going that you know are going to become your focal point. Your some of your main uh, subject. You know the the first thing that people see and that they remember about your art. So pick that stuff that's in the middle. That's how you're going to get the you know the quickest kind of uh, impact. If um, your shading cast shadows in there on the background when you're massing or hatching into your background, the majority of your strokes should be essentially horizontals. Horizontal marks tend to imply space and uh, drop away. Vertical marks, on the other hand, uh, look more like form and tend to advance. here maybe is you know again you have to hatch as opposed to mass in your planes and when you're hatching it's giving you the opportunity to bring a little bit of curvature into your into your mark making uh, you can follow the the uh, direction that the form is traveling go along that form or across it So I want to try to mass in under planes and shadows. It's just a blending stick. Uh, definitely sometimes when I'm starting to get things to try to push away, drop back. Okay, that's the main place I'm going to use my blending stick. It's on areas that I'm trying to push backwards. Do use it in the shadows, um, probably more often than the lights. But I don't necessarily think about the blending stick as uh, something for shadows. What I think about it as is something I can use to push material inward. And when you push drawing material or art material, painting material, into the surface, what happens is it has the visual appearance of dropping away or going away from you. So you're pushing it back, and it also looks like your shapes, your forms, your objects, your space pushes back. So, and then my other bit of advice is try not to use the blending stick too much, too early. Um, but rather, Continue, continue this process. 
continue this process of adding pencil and using hatch marks to get the shapes and the colors that you want. So if you need something to be darker or smoother, maybe you just need to spend more time coloring it in with your pencil point and not trying to blend it. This is a piece of paper towel. I also uh, like that, maybe even prefer students to use the paper towel as opposed to the blender because uh, the towel is a little more broad. Uh, the blending stump encourages people to get too slow and finicky too early in the drawing and it stuff looks fussy or overworked in some places and underdeveloped in others. So don't over lie on the blending stick. The main point here right now is we've got to get these planes masked in. That means you've got to use the point of your tool to uh, actually go through and paint in or assign value to everything on the paper. Don't think that you're going to get the colors you need by smudging. It's much more advanced and healthy to think about it, uh, getting to the values you need by layering, by adding more. If you need to uh, erase little little edges or things like that to keep contrast sharp or where you want it, that's normal. I want to try to minimize my need to use the blending stick or the eraser. Uh, the towel is fine, you know, if any time I have debris, but I'm not rubbing on that very, very hard. One of the main things that I'm looking for as I work is contrast, is edges, and then I make decision about once I have an outline or an edge, I say, well, what side of that edge is lighter or darker? Lighter or darker? That's, that's always the question that is being asked. I have an outline. I just say, well, do I have to color more on the inside of the outline or on the outside of the outline? And it's always changing. Some strong underplanes here on this form. I'm going to continue to develop. But I want to start to move some of my uh, focus and energy over. Use a ruler. It's a great way to give a little more mechanical appearance to the paper, which is a, is a very mechanical thing, actually. Paper is an industrialized product. It's made in factory. It's very uniform. Uh, it has straight edges. It's very consistent in terms of its thickness, its weight. Uh, so, you know, using a ruler to help suggest some of that is is definitely required. Pencil drawing is a little different than charcoal drawing. It takes a while to fill in the shapes. And uh, my advice is that you try to use hatch marks or uh, strokes that you layer. And when you need to go darker, you change the direction of those strokes. At first, uh, it might seem a little, a uh, little scratchy, uh, like there's, a, you know, a lot of noise or something on the surface. But as those strokes accumulate, what happens is they reach a kind of density uh, where the image starts to come into focus, as well as um, all the marks. This, this look is definitely something that I, that I do on purpose, in a way. I want to cultivate it. I want you to learn about it and to do it as well.
right, well, this, this drawing is intended to take some time uh, to, to develop. So there's not, there's not a lot of stuff that's changing in here as I'm working on it in terms of my approach. It's just a kind of a question of uh, getting through it and doing the work sometimes. This, of course, is, is the best part about, you know, being an artist or, or about drawing is, you know, having everything set up so that you can take the time to mass it in, to glaze it down, and continue to work on your rendering. This is where stuff really gets exciting, starts to pop, um, keeps you coming back for more. Sometimes the best thing you can do, not always, but once in a while it's very useful just to color right across the whole thing. And, you know, you look at it and you, you get a little obsessed with some of the details, but you kind of forget maybe that um, it's not white. It's not white. It's not even close to white. Um, you know, save your white for some of your brightest areas. So the takeaway is that almost everything needs a little bit of massing or hatching on it. Bit of reflected light always helps to sort of turn those planes as if it looks like a little a little fuzzy or a little muddy. Maybe you need to swipe at some of those underplanes a little bit, bringing some light back in uh, to the underside of the object. Reflected light, great way to start bring that form, turn it back around a little bit so that it starts to look a little more dimensional. The general rule is, though, uh, nothing in your reflected light should be as bright as anything in your top light. Try to distribute your work, you know, it's one of the hardest things to teach about is um, balancing your workflow, not getting overly fixated on one thing um, and then forgetting that you still have a lot of other stuff to do. So it's hard sometimes for beginners, especially, to know when something is done or when you could move on and um, again it's just very challenging to, to teach about how how to watch your own work evolve but you have you have to pace yourself um, maybe you could even set timers I don't know uh, but somehow you have to realize well something's probably good enough for now and I should leave it alone And, and move along because there's still a lot of empty space there's still a lot of blank space and you as artists are seeing what you were just focusing on but all of your viewers all of your audience is still seeing all of your empty space so you it's hard, I think that's the main hurdle there you know it, it's hard to do both things at the same time which is uh, to see your drawing and uh, to see all the stuff that you, you still have to cover. Um, and it's easy to kind of lose track of time and spend more time than you wanted to on one thing and not enough on something else. When you are encountering new terrain or you're trying to get into some, some empty space, there's always a little bit of some setup. You have to kind of decide, is, is my line art okay? Am I ready to commit to 
uh, these edges and lines that I've drawn. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time working on my line quality uh, before massing in a new section. Uh, that means I'm trying to make my uh, ribbons even more ribbon-like. Um, maybe just checking some of the shot size and shape and the geometry of my planes and shadows. I'm kind of doing it simultaneously, but I, I'm working on line quality. And then I'm going to mass it in. So one of the main problems with drawing from a projection is that um, the outlines are, are not often not strong enough and they um, are kind of undefined. They don't have enough uh, structure um, that a, a more experienced artist could, could invest into line art um, based on looking at something. So it's good, you know, use, you can use a projector to get stuff put in place, but then, you know, you've got to look carefully at your photograph, you've got to look at your model, mine's right in front of me on the wall, <clears throat> and I'm kind of merging all of these visions together on, onto my piece of paper. Um, the photograph is telling me exactly where to put stuff, um, but then I can look around and I can use some things about what I see and some of my previous experience from other semesters and and other artwork uh, to help me understand about how how to apply these tones. So um, I I just tend to work on the outlines quite a bit before I feel confident enough to um, add start adding value. Um, the reason is you know if I have to make a change um, if I've already started to mask things in it's so much harder to erase all of that than it is to just move some lines around. So it's a really old strategy. It goes, you know, all the way back to the Renaissance, if not even before, uh, which is you're just going to develop your line art first and then do your massing and your, your value techniques second.
Alright guys, well, uh, I'm about four hours into this drawing. I started and completed most of the drawing with 2B pencil. Um, and then uh, later on in the drawing, after glazing and uh, building up those planes, I started to um, use uh, a variety of erasers. Pencil is a little different than charcoal in that when you glaze it doesn't it doesn't spread as far. So you, you have to continue to build up these colors, these values, using a lot of little strokes. Literally hundreds if not thousands of strokes uh, go into creating a drawing like this. And it just takes a lot of trial and error and a lot of practice. Pencil is actually a, a fairly challenging medium, I think, um, if you're trying to take it a long way. Anyway, I completed most of the drawing with 2B pencil. I did some erasing, a variety of erasers, a gray eraser, pink eraser, white eraser, uh, whatever seems to be working for you um, and the need that you have at the moment. Um, I also use uh, a ruler a lot and an index card a lot to create uh, straight edges and uh, to, to clean off uh, bits of outline that are too thick. And you can thin out that line with your eraser. Uh, sometimes the best thing to do is actually um, erase the whole thing and redraw it, but you gotta, you gotta work on that stuff. Um, so build up your planes. It's a lot like charcoal in a sense. You know, you're gonna build up most of the drawing uh, with your 2B. Build up most of the drawing with your 2B. Keep glazing it as you work. And then uh, what happens is you can come back with your eraser and start to lift off some of the value in your top planes. I'm just going to lift off some of the lighting, top of the forms. I just encourage you to try any, any and all of your erasers in this drawing. It's really, it's all good. I have a variety of you know, I'm, what I've, I've got the model in front of me, and so sometimes when I can't see um, or I'm out of ideas from looking at a photograph, I mean, drawing from life is a great, a great way to uh, get some extra uh, insight into what needs to happen. Lift off top planes and lighting effects with your various erasers, and then uh, the other, the other thing that I have uh, started to do. Uh, kind of got it started off camera, but you can develop your core shadows using a softer pencil like a 6B or a 4B. So I've started to develop my cores with a 6B. Um, I, I skipped all, the whole 4B step. That's, that's up to you. You want to go back and add some 4B in there, but I just kind of started to deposit a little 6B into the cores. Uh, one of the main problems with pencil is it's gonna it's, it likes to dig in and it gets and it gets shiny. So you're compacting your the fibers in your paper um, as you draw, and you're also building up a kind of sheen, uh, which which kind of is both things are um, maybe not the greatest when you're trying to create uh, something that is that is an illusion or that looks three-dimensional. So I can use a little bit of 6B to darken up some of those cores and planes. You know, you could also use 4B. Just experiment. But essentially what happens is you start with the 2B, you take that really as far as you can, and then you can switch over to something softer to start to uh, deal with some of your uh, darker tones or to smooth out some of the areas that uh, have a lot of speckles in them. You know, for me also, it's not always just a straight linear progression. Sometimes I actually come back and uh, will, you know, keep working with the, with the 2B or even the HB. Uh, this is a 6B pencil. I'm just using it to develop some cores. And I'm just kind of using those cores as a way to uh, get the viewer to follow me, follow my eye through the piece. So the core shadows are there to kind of create a sense of movement 
and uh, to lead your viewer through the composition. When I change colors there, it's creating a visual um, movement. Back to uh, my 2B here, just kind of continuing to clean stuff up. I've been working on this drawing for about four hours, and I'm going to call it good. I think probably uh, for students, you're looking at much longer than that to um, achieve a result where you, you have all of your forms completed, but you, you should stay on it, and you should work on it in phases, come back to it as you need. I like to sign my drawings down here in the lower right. I'm going to use a small print um, that's, that's legible. And um, I'm going to use a ruler here just to make a little baseline for my signature.